Hello and welcome, Brett here with ClickMill.co. In this video, we're gonna be talking about what to do when church events are not generating the growth that you hoped for. In this video, I want to start by sharing an idea with you, a concept. And the thing that I love about ideas is they're very simple. God created the world to work in an orderly way and good, godly ideas generally get good results and bad ideas get bad results. So this is natural revelation. This is God created the world to work in an orderly way. And one of the ideas I wanna share with you today is what we would call contrarianism. Contrarianism is the idea that what works is what most people are not doing. And I wanna begin, and we want, I wanna really make sure we understand the depth of contrarianism here. It doesn't mean you just don't do what everybody's doing. It doesn't mean that we're being rebellious and we're just saying, oh, you know, just kind of buck the system and just go do something else. It's not that, it's also harder than that. So let's talk about firstly, why we want to be contrarian in many cases, not all cases, but many. And this is where I want to talk about a second idea, and that is the 80-20 principle from the mathematician Pareto. I believe his name was Wilfred Pareto. But Pareto found this weird correlation that exists in essentially every part of life, and it is not what you would think. But it says that 80% of your effort, so you go to work 80% of the time that you spend on a daily basis, for example, gets you 20% of your results. 80% of the effort that you put in every day at your ministry only gets you 20% of your results. So if 80% of what you're putting in only gets you a little bit, well, the 20% left, right? The 20% of your effort somewhere in your day gets you 80% of your results. So there's this disproportionate element with your work and your effort and your time and your financial resources, you can look at this spectrum on anything you do. For example, here at ClickMail, 20% of our clientele brings in 80% of our revenue. If you do this for the people coming to your church, you will find that roughly 20% of your church going audience brings in 80% of the money. So go and check it out. It is true essentially wherever you look and it is incredibly reliable and we use it here to generate growth. But if this is the case, then this means that 80% of ministries, let's just say in the West or in the United States, 80% of Christian ministries are getting 20% of the results of introducing people to a relationship with Christ or changing people's lives in a positive way. 80% of the ministries are only doing that for 20%. Whereas the 20% of ministries, the very small percent of ministries in the West or in the United States are creating 80% of the results. So the issue is, if all of the churches, if the majority of ministries, churches here in, let's say, the United States again, are doing big events for Christmas and Easter and all these things, and we're throwing these big, lavish parties that are draining a, just a massive amount of our resources, why would we assume that that works for getting people to come from the door to the core? We've seen it not working, and you've seen it not working, which presumably is why you clicked on this video, and yet we keep doing it over and over because why? Everyone's doing it. Well, the contrarian view would say probably what everyone's doing isn't the most efficient because the 80% of people are doing the same thing. That's the herd mentality and they're only getting 20% of the results. So the contrarian view says maybe we should consider what everyone isn't doing but even further than that, most ideas get bad results. So maybe what the, the herd is doing, what everybody is doing, isn't producing good results, but there's a thousand other ideas out there and all of those, maybe outside of a couple, will also get poor results. So it's not even just, we wanna buck the crowd and not do what everybody's doing. No, we have to actually find the right thing, the thing that gets results. And this is where I want to pick up with you today, which is how do we do that? And I wanna say, why events used to work and why they don't work now and what you can do to 
see the growth you want in your ministry. Let's say back in the 1950s, you know, not saying any specific date, but just back word in time. Western society shared a cohesive worldview, generally speaking. Generally speaking, people are deists or theists at least, or Christian theists, and we believed in an objective morality, and we believed in all of these things that we shared. And our churches supported those things, and our churches were meeting the needs in the community. And so when we had an event, well, what happened? There's essentially no gap between the beliefs of just sort of the average everyday secular person and people in the church. You know, and I'm speaking broadly, but these people get invited to church and they go, this is great. I, and now I understand why I believe these things because of, you know, the Bible and God and Jesus. And I, now I have a fuller picture and they stick to the ministry after the event because the ministry is upholding what they already essentially believe, that the gap is smaller, and that ministry is meeting their needs and discipling them. And so they go from the door to the core. And so in this sense, of course, events used to be effective. And of course, they've held over because they did used to be effective. Today, however, when we look at our culture and we have people, the culture at large is New Age, Wicca, pantheistic religions, Hinduism, Buddhism, yoga. When they talk about meditation, it's clearing your mind of all things, not filling your mind with God in a relationship with God. So everything is totally removed from what is required to accept a Christian worldview and feel comfortable in a church. And so in the modern world, what happens? We throw an event, we get all these people to our church, and they get there and they go, this is nothing like anything, I believe. <laughs> you know, How do we get those people to stick to the ministry? We don't have anything in common anymore. And so it is much more difficult bringing people from the community into a ministry and then hoping they just stick. So this is one of the major reasons that I see as I work with ministry leaders all over the Western world, especially all over the United States, that these events just aren't working anymore. There's just such a huge cultural gap between the secular world and the Christian world. It's just a non-starter when they come, even if they're coming with family and friends. How do we fix this? And this is what I want to address specifically in this video, and hopefully this is encouraging to you and your ministry. I talk about this all the time. If you follow any of my content, whether it's the blogs at clickmill.co or it's here, you will know that I talk about meeting needs all the time. And it's because people go wherever their needs are met. This is true in the New Testament. People follow Jesus because he meets their non-spiritual needs first. He goes to Peter, James, and John on the lake. They don't have fish. He gives them fish. He's talking to the woman at the well about physical water. He's talking to hungry people at the Sermon on the Mount, and he gives them food, right? I think, I'm, I think that's right, the Sermon on the Mount, the, talking to the 4,000, and he's giving them food. He's talking to the blind guy. What do you want? Sight. He gives him sight. He starts by meeting a non-spiritual need. Then that really opens their heart. This person actually cares about me. They care about my needs. And then they care about what Jesus says. And he goes, well, I got something even more important. And then he moves to the spiritual, follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. In ministry, we start with the spiritual and we're forgetting the needs in a lot of cases. And that's what happens at events. People show up, we, you know, talk about the Bible, but they don't care because we haven't met their needs. We haven't actually touched their lives in any meaningful way like Jesus was doing. And so they leave, you know, they got a free meal out of it. They got a free party, good for them. And then they take off. What we want to be doing when events are not growing your church in the way they should is we need to take a look. We need to go back to the drawing board and we need to say, once this event is over, what are the needs that this community has? And not the needs I think they have, the needs they think they have. Are single moms struggling to have healthy relationships? Are you know men not having the career opportunities that they want, they can't provide for their families or financial struggles? What are the actual real world practical problems they're having? And let's talk about ways to solve those. And the easiest way to figure this out is just to talk to everybody that comes to your church. What is the biggest problem you have in your life? What is the biggest need that you wished would be solved? 
what is the most impactful experience you've had with our ministry? If you just ask those three questions to every single person that comes to your church, you will see the 80-20 rule play out in their answers. You ask 100 people, you'll see 80 people are essentially saying the same few things. And you will know the needs that your ministry needs to meet. Now, here's what happens. When you start meeting those needs with consistency, they'll start to realize, oh, these people are meeting needs and they'll go grab their friends. And I'm putting a passage down in the description so that you can actually see this in the New Testament. Jesus heals people. They go get their friends. He heals those people. All the people go get their friends from all the places. He heals them. And then thousands of people follow him. Why? Because he's meeting their needs. So when you're consistently meeting the needs of the people around your church and the people in your specific targeted audience and your community, they're going to start coming. Then when you're meeting the needs of your audience consistently and you throw an event, the worldview differences just go out the window. They don't care because people go where their needs are met and people stay where their needs are met consistently. Don't stop now. We have tons of other videos for you to watch and learn how to reach more people more effectively. If you love this video and you don't want to miss out on what we have coming up for you next, go ahead, like this video, subscribe to our channel, and ring the bell to keep up to date with our newest content. If you want to work with ClickMill personally, head on over to clickmill.co where you can learn more about our proven ministry marketing strategies. I look forward to seeing you in the very next video.